What's up everyone? Chris from Duckle Up Outdoors. We're going to be doing a video for you on decoy anchors and how to make your own. We're not going to be going with the lead ones like you see here in my hand. Uh, this was purchased at Cabela's. It's a six ounce decoy anchor. The length on it, I'm not 100% sure. I think it's like 42 inches or something like that. What we're going to be making is our own. This is what the idea I came up with, which I'm sure somebody out there is, has done this before, but with the V-boards that I made, you need a lot more weight to be able to hold them down. It's really windy out. They don't become like kites. You know, they don't get thrown all over the place. And a little six ounce or eight ounce uh, weight isn't gonna hold it. So you need a lot more weight than that. So what I came up with is using carabiners and that's what's gonna clip into my, my eyelet on my V-board. If you haven't seen my V-boards yet, the video has been recorded and uploaded to YouTube, also to Instagram, you can go check that out. These are gonna be my lines going on to my V-boards. So it's a carabiner, and I got your, your normal like crab line, and I gave it some a decent length to it. So that way if I get out there on the Susquehanna Flats, or if I'm in just a, you know, a deep pond or something, these, these lines are long enough to be able to hit the bottom. Thing that comes to this though, keeping these from getting tangled up, that's the biggest uh, con to it. But the pro to it is how cheap they are compared to what you can purchase at Cabela's or if you try to make these on your own. Because uh, the decoy line is not cheap and also lead is not cheap either, especially when you get over six ounces. The next clip is gonna be the products that I purchased, going through the prices, and y'all can make your comparison. This is what I'm gonna be rolling with this next coming season, just coming up on September 1st, I'm super excited. And y'all can see how it plays out. So stay tuned for the next clip. So these are the products that I purchased at Home Depot. The concrete was $4.80. The little bag of washers was, I'm trying to get exact prices for you, it's $1.18. I got two, uh, two bags of those because I plan on making about 12 to 14 of these things. The eyelet bolts were 71 cents a piece, which ended up coming to $8.52. The little bucket was like two bucks. I'm pretty sure you can go to Dollar Tree and pick something up cheaper to include like the thing to mix up the concrete and to pour it. This is the idea I came up with was getting like some sort of like either tackle box or toolbox or something that holds nuts and washers and bolts and stuff. And these little containers is pretty much going to be my weight. Um, so far as deepness, I mean, it's probably about three, yeah, about three inches deep and about two inches wide. I don't plan on filling it all the way up with concrete because this bolt uh, goes down there, you know, and too, too deep. So I'm probably going to do it about three quarters of the way so that way the concrete just comes up to the beginning of the eyelet that's why i got the washers i'm going to have the washer down there on the bottom to include the nut so that way it gives it a lot uh the concrete a lot to hold on to um as for these bigger little compartments i'm just going to make two extra of these and the, the concrete pieces that just stick in there the reason why i went with this is because the concrete isn't good for decoys so so far as like banging up against them, banging up your, uh, your kayak, if you're, if you're hunting out a kayak, banging up against the boat, uh, having them in that little, that little toolbox is gonna keep them contained. It's gonna keep them from busting up against stuff. Um, it's also going to, what we've come back to, of keeping these lines from getting tangled up. So essentially what you can do is tie off one of your lines to your eyelet bolt and once you pull in your decoy, then you can put your concrete down in there, finish the line, just like drop it down in there. Like if you've ever long lined uh, decoys before, you just line the, uh, the line in with the concrete and then you take your carabiner and you can either snap it onto the eyelet or just drop it in there. And there you have it. So you can just do that for the individual ones. And then when you go to deploy them, you just unhook the carabiner off the eyelet bolt. You hook it onto your V board or whatever you're trying to anchor off and just toss it off and with that extra line it's not going to 
sling and pull pull the decoy out with you or pull the v-board out of your hands you have an extra you have extra line to work with so that way you can go ahead and deploy it nicely so that way you're not banging up uh, any of your decoys or your v-boards your next question is probably how do you keep the concrete from when you mix it inside this and pour it from sticking to it because i want the concrete mix and the concrete anchor to be exactly this size and shape I'm going to use aluminum foil, so pretty much I'm going to rip off a sleeve of it, stuff it down in there on the sides, get it all you know down into the actual uh, crevices, and then once I mix my concrete, I'll pour it down in there, shove my eyelet bolt down in there, make sure I give it a good shake, mix up, you know, get all the spaces filled up with the concrete, and then we're going to let it cure. All right, so here is what we got. We got the eyelet bolts down into the concrete. This is my second batch. This is the first batch from yesterday. So like the, the two extra uh, pieces in here. Aluminum foil, of course you wanna peel off as much as you can off of it. Uh, once this thing 100% you know, cures and dries, um, I'll be able to get off the, the rest of it with like a brush or something like that, a steel brush. The finished product is, this is gonna clip onto the V-boards like I was talking about before with your line. We have the anchor down in here, which pulls out nicely and stores nicely. What I'm gonna do with the, the end piece to be able to attach on to the anchor is, of course, you don't wanna forget about burning the end and tying a knot so that way it doesn't fray up on you. I was originally thinking about just tying the line onto here, um, but what I forgot about is twist. So if the V-boards are twisting or your decoy is twisting or whatever you have at the top of the water is moving around. With line like this, um, it's gonna, it, it'll get all bound up and wound up on, each, you know, on itself um, without some sort of swivel. So I am either going to attach an inline swivel to where I have an eyelet on both sides, that way both ends can uh, twist or I'm just gonna get a normal swivel, like you use fishing, just attach onto this. And then once you're done, and everything is stored up and it's attached, you can take your carabiner and latch it onto the eyelet. When you compare prices, I feel like this is cheaper. When you get to the weight comparisons, but when you get to quality, and ease of use so far as like keeping stuff untangled, keeping things attached to whatever device that you're using, whether if it's a floater decoy or V-boards, that would probably benefit you more in having the decoy line and a lead weight. But I hope that y'all like the idea uh, and maybe something that you wanna try. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comments. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Um, go ahead and share the video. I like to get out as much information as I can, just things I come up with just sitting around uh, you know, board. I try to come up with things to be able to home make it. Hopefully, you know, make things cheaper because as we all know, duck hunting, goose hunting, waterfowl in general is very expensive. Uh, so if you can always save a dollar by making making stuff on your own, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and y'all have a good one.